detail. What is the biggest question in your mind going into this fight? There are so many different angles, right? The pressure on Izzy after his last performance, Costa trying to take down, you know, his 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 bitter rival, and everyone saying that you know he's like the bull in the china shop, and Izzy is able to elude his punches and counter. -shot. What's the biggest question that you are looking forward to answering tonight in this main event? Okay, here's what's being missed. All right, this is a very conflicting style fight. Now, generally, when you and I talk about that, we're talking about a grappler versus a striker. In this case, you have two strikers, but Aaron, they're totally different. Look, you've got the technician in Adesanya. You've got a guy who's a master of feints, who's a master of the pull, who's a master of disappearing. I mean, he almost never gets hit in the face. He's just very hard to reach. He's got some length. He's got some height, but he's got some movement. Then you have the brute force. You have an absolute bull in Paulo Costa. He is going to walk you down. He is going to throw punches. He will adopt the George Foreman policy, which is I'll take three to give you one. And not to mention he goes to the body because when you talk about Izzy and he's a ghost out there, he's slipping, he's pulling, he's moving. He's hard to touch even for Anderson Silva. That body doesn't move. And that's a very easy thing for a fight analyst to say. But if you're talking about an opponent that doesn't dig to the body, it doesn't make any sense to bring it up. Paulo Costa goes to the body. I'm going to predict for you this, Errol. This is not going to be a close fight. I don't know who's going to win. But one guy with these conflicting styles is going to take charge early and keep it all night long. So all these people watching right now, you, you, you want to, well, we won't be able to see it, but just imagine it for a second. You want to see their heads explode right now, right here and now? Let me offer you this, Chael. Israel Adesanya is the best striker in the UFC since Conor McGregor. He might be the best of all time when it comes to high-level, world-class striking. What I love so much about Izzy, and, and honestly, why Izzy reminds me of Conor? Conor doesn't waste punches, right? He's like a sniper out there. And that's why I love watching Izzy so much. He doesn't waste punches. Every single punch he throws has meaning, right? He always is looking for the target. He's not, as you said, throwing three to try to land one, et cetera. What about this striking? Do you, I mean, and, and he might be better than Connor because of the kickboxing. He kicks way better than Connor kicks. He's a world-class kickboxer who, who fought for the likes of, you know, glory kickboxing, et cetera. I really think he's one of the best strikers that we've ever seen, certainly over the past 10 years or so. Am I wrong? Oh, you're absolutely right. Through the history of the sport. Yes, ab absolutely. I mean, if you were to look at who the great strikers were, you'd probably start with Marco, who was, who passed the torch uh, to Maurice Smith. And then I fully agree with you. <clears throat> I like what you're saying about Conor McGregor. Conor does have a power. He did have some unique setups. Anderson Silva would get included in that list. John Jones, just because of how dynamic and creative he was. But yes, if you want to put these guys in there, Queensberry rules, kickboxing rules, take all the grappling out, Adesanya is the one that walks out of that alley. That I can tell you. Is Paulo Costa the perfect opponent for Israel, especially coming off a fight like the Romero fight, because A, he's going to bring the fight to him. No, really? He's going to bring the fight to him. He's a counter striker. He's, he, he's, he's a big target. Why are you shaking your head? I feel like he's the perfect guy. I'm shaking my head because that's a tough one, right? Everything is so clear in hindsight, but I feel as though this will be one of the talking points in our narrative uh, when you and I meet up again next week after we see this. The problem with Paulo, not only will he walk you down, the problem with Paulo, and again, this is to, to quote what uh, George Foreman used to do with his own philosophy, I will take two or three if I can give you one, and that is the problem with Paulo, is he is so powerful, Ariel, that it, it, it's the great divide. He also goes to the body, and that's very relevant. Coaches love to come out and tell you, well, the head moves, but the body doesn't, so hit him in the body. If that's not within your skill set, then it's not worth bringing up. He goes to the body. He'll slip to the kidney. He'll slip to the liver. He'll come right down the middle to the breadbasket, and then he'll come back upstairs. Eventually, Paulo Costa is going to put Izzy on the fence. Eventually, Izzy's going to back up and move and do everything right that he's supposed to do, but eventually there will be nowhere to go. That's when the fight for Paulo's side is going to break out. What he can do from there, that's between those boys. But I can assure you that position and that exchange is going to happen. Gosh, I can't wait for this, Chili. You know, Dana White is a promoter and promoters are going to promote, but he has called this fight on paper one of, if not the best of 2020. I have a hard time disagreeing with that. The, 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 the skill set that they both have, the beef, the rivalry, what's at stake, so much to like here. And I'm so curious about Costa as well. Haven't seen him fight in almost, what, 14 months, Chill, A long layoff against a guy like Israel Adesanya. It's fascinating theater. It's the main event of UFC 253.